Welcome to this video. Here we're going to cover installing Google Analytics so you can track and analyze your website traffic. I'll share a little bit of background here. So if you want to jump straight to installation, go to the next section in the progress bar. So in 2019, vendors who sold Google Analytics 360, which is Google's premium version of Google Analytics that costs $150,000 a year, were pushing GA App Plus Web to GA360 customers. I remember sitting on that call with our GA360 vendor where they informed us that Google really wanted to push users to GA App Plus Web. But for our organization, it was deprioritized to our backlog and we never made the move to actually install it. In 2020, Google rebranded it to GA4 and announced it as the most up-to-date version of Google Analytics in October. So when you go to set up GA, GA4 is now the default version that you'll install. You can still install GA Universal Analytics, which is the previous version that most users still probably have installed right now, but the option is kind of hidden. Even now, it's not a bad idea to install both GA4 and Universal Analytics and run them in parallel, especially if you're used to Universal Analytics. Plus, you should surely keep your existing version of Universal Analytics as Google continues to develop and update GA4. This will give you some time to get used to the new solution. We don't have a timeline as to when Google will sunset Universal Analytics, but their resources for developing new analytics features are focused on GA4. So let's set this up. First, log into Google and go to analytics.google.com or search for Google Analytics and it should appear as the first result. If you don't have an account already, this is the landing page that you'll see. So click on Start Measuring and begin to create your account. If you already have access to a GA account, go to Admin and click on create account. We're brought to the same account creation screen. So when you create your account, keep in mind that your GA account could potentially encompass multiple web properties. So for example, your account name could be your organization. And within your organization's account, you could create GA properties for your website, a subdomain, a mobile app, or so on and so forth. So we'll give this a name and take a look at the settings to figure out which one you want to enable. I'm going to check off the first one because I want the enhanced demographics and interest reporting. We'll click next and set up our first GA4 property. Give the property a name and set the correct time zone. And then you're going to click on show advanced options. Now this is where we'll enable the universal analytics property. Slide this toggle over to the right so that it turns blue. Select your HTTP prefix and input your website URL. Make sure that both of these options are selected because we want a GA4 property and a universal analytics property. And then we want this enhanced measurement for a GA4 property enabled because that'll automatically set up tracking such as link clicks and embedded videos as well as a few other events. Click on next and you can choose to input this business information, but it's optional. Now this is a guess, but 
if you provide your intended uses of GA, what they'll do is employ their AI to provide you with insights that are tailored to your experience. Again, just a guess, but we'll click on create and it'll bring us to the terms of service, which we'll have to accept in order to proceed. Instead of creating a reporting view like you did with Universal Analytics, we're brought to this screen with WebStream details. We have the URL, the name, and measurement ID at the top. Go ahead and copy the measurement ID because we'll need it for later. There's the stream ID, the status, and then the section for enhanced measurement. And this is the same enhanced measurement that we were talking about earlier when we were first creating our account and property. So you can see exactly what will be automatically tracked when you turn on this enhanced measurement. If you don't want any of these, you can click on the gear settings here and toggle off the ones that you don't want. Go to the next section with tagging instructions. Here we'll go through a couple scenarios. The first two will cover adding new tags to your website. And then if you already have tags on your website, we'll cover modifying your existing tracking. To add the analytics tag directly to your site, click on global site tag. Copy the code that appears and go to your HTML. Find the opening head tag and paste the code that you copied. The second method is to add the analytics tag using a tag manager like Google Tag Manager or GTM for short. It's a great way to manage your tags, especially if you're not a developer. You can manage tags for advertising, other marketing tools, creating customized tracking, and validating data you're tracking all without developer resources. Go to tagmanager.google.com and once the page loads, you'll see that you'll need to create a new account. So the account structure for GTM is similar to what you'll have in GA. So the account name can be your organization name and the container can be similar to what you named your properties. So the target platform that you select is the type of web property that you're tracking. So click on create, accept the terms of service. Then you'll see the instructions to install GTM. So copy this first snippet of code, go to your HTML, We'll remove the snippet from the previous example and we'll paste our code as high up in the head tag as possible. Go back to the instructions, copy the second snippet of code, go to the HTML, find the opening body tag. and paste that snippet of code right after the opening body tag there. Close this out, and in this overview section, click on add a new tag. Click in the tag configuration and choose Google Analytics GA4 configuration. Go back to the tagging instructions in your GA tag now that you have the GTM code in your HTML, click on use existing on-page tag and copy your measurement ID. Go back to your GTM tab and paste your measurement ID in that field. We'll leave this option marked because we want that page view event to fire and send to GA. Next, we'll set up the trigger that will fire this tag. So click in the triggering section and choose this all pages trigger. 
So this tag will fire whenever a page loads. And we'll name this tag GA4 configuration and save it. Now we can see if our tag works. But in order to do that, you need to be in a Chrome browser and you'll need the Tag Assistant by Google Chrome extension. So go to the Chrome store and install that extension. When you're back in GTM, click on Preview and publish the empty container. So once the container is published, click on Preview in the model or the Preview button next to the Submit button in the top right. Then what will happen is a new tab will load where you'll input your URL for the website. So once you do that, click on Start. This will load the next page as well as a new tab with your website. And you'll notice in the URL that it has this GTM debug parameter. So you can differentiate that page view in your GA. And here on this page, we'll see in the lower right corner that the preview mode debugger has been connected. If you go back to the previous tab, you'll also see the same success indicator. If it hasn't connected, you'll see the progress bar load only halfway or a message saying that it failed to connect. If that's the case, go back to the tab with your page, your website, and click on the Tag Assistant extension. And what you might see is a button that says Reload. So click on that button and that should enable you to connect to the preview mode. Go back to the other tab that loaded, click on Continue, and what you'll see here is that Tag Assistant shows you the tags that have fired and the tags that haven't. This shows us our GA configuration tag fired successfully. We can go to GA4 to validate this as well. In your GA tab, click out of this and click on the clock icon. You'll see the real-time report load and look at that. There's our page view event right there. Next, go to your UA property so you can connect your G4 account. That way you can send data to both properties. Before you do that, make sure you've copied your GA4 measurement ID. Now click on the drop down menu at the top, choose the account you want, and under properties and apps, you'll see your UA property. Your UA property will have your UA tracking ID. Note that only your UA properties have a tracking ID that begins with UA. In the admin section under the property column, click on tracking info and tracking code. Scroll down to connected tags, click on the down arrow on the right and paste your GA4 measurement ID. Now click connect. We already added the GA4 configuration tag on the website. But if you're adding completely new tracking to your website, you still need to add the universal analytics tag. So click the X, go to the global site tag section and copy the code. Go to the head tag in your HTML and paste it directly below the opening head tag as the first item. You can also install it using GTM. So let's remove this code snippet from our example. Go back to your tracking code section in the GA admin. Find the UAID at the top and copy it. In GTM, create a new tag selecting GA Universal Analytics as the tag type. Keep it as a page view tag and configure the GA settings by creating a new variable. Paste your tracking ID 
in the appropriate field and you can name it GA UA settings variable. Save it and now create the trigger. Similar to the GA4 configuration tag, use an all pages trigger. You can name this tag GA UA page view tag. Then run another test to validate that both properties receive the data. So let's click on preview. Make sure the URL is correct. Check that the debugger is connected and go back to the tag assistant debugger tab. We see that both the GA4 configuration tag and the GA UA page view tag have both fired. Check the real time reports for both properties. There's the page view there. So check that off. And in the other property, we have the page view there as well. So check and check. There it is. We have the initial tracking working. Leave a comment if you're planning to install GA4 or if you've already installed GA4, what your experience has been with the setup. And if you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and share the video. This way, together, we can cover key aspects to help you build, track, and improve digital experiences. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Thank you.